On screen, now I'm going to show you all the keywords pertaining to Yeshua. So I've highlighted there in all the red. And we're going to break these down now. I'm going to show you in Leviticus 1, the cross of Calvary. I'm going to break it down line by line, precept by precept, because it's going to blow your mind. It's going to blow your mind. Because when you read that off the cuff, it's really difficult to digest because you're reading this solemn, horrific, sacrificial system of Levi. And, you know, it's enough to make anyone go, oh, that's gone, not now, just Jesus. When really this is Jesus, this is Jesus, this is Yeshua and his sacrifice and the glory of it and the miracle that it was. So these are the key lines that i'm going to unpack let's get into it and i hope that you can all take something great from it and bear with me on it because it's going to be great leviticus chapter 1 verse 2 okay so let's begin when a man of you brings an offering to the lord you shall bring an offering of livestock of the herd of the flock now there's a grammatical mystery found in our opening verse here and it's beautiful and it holds the secret to reveal the Messiah and how he is found in the very first verse of Leviticus. When a man, what is the word for man in Hebrew? Adam. It's Adam, Adam, okay. And there's something quite peculiar inside of this as well, isn't he, bro, with the Aleph and the Tav that we see in the Hebrew scroll. Maybe you could highlight that just before I, I continue. It's, um, as Peter says in the English, um, Speak to the sons of Israel and say to them, when any one of you brings of you an offering to God of the livestock, of the herd and of the flock, you shall bring your offering. At the very end there, you shall bring your offering. When it's read in the Hebrew, there's an untranslated word there right in the middle, and it says the Aleph Tav, which when it's translated into English, it's just blank. It's an untranslatable word, but we know, because Yeshua tells us, he's the Alpha and Omega which yeah, is the Greek, tough. and in Hebrew that's the Aleph Tav. So when we see the Aleph Tav just pop up in scriptures here, it's practically saying, you shall bring Yeshua, your offering. You shall bring the Aleph Tav, your offering. That's mm. what it says at the end of verse two. Hallelujah. You shall bring the Aleph Tav, your offering. Hallelujah. Yeah. So when any one of you, an Adam, in a fallen state, you shall bring your Aleph Tav, you shall bring the Aleph Tav, the Alpha and the Omega, you shall bring Yeshua wow. unto the Lord. And what does the scripture say? And he shall be of the herd, herd and of the flock. Okay, John 1 verse 11, he came to his own and his own did not receive him. Okay, so, so this offering, that this of the Aleph Tav, the Aleph Tav of, of the flock has to be taken from, from your own herd. Yeshua came to his own and his own did not receive him. All right, he was, a, he was a child of Israel and he came to Israel and Israel did not receive him. He was, he was, he was this, the, the good shepherd, but he was also part of that flock, okay? The flock of Israel. He came to his own, his own did not receive him. And we read in Matthew 18 verse 11 how he calls himself the son of man has come to save that which is lost. So already as we begin, we see uh, that we are to bring the elephant tav to the Lord as an offering, that this shall be from the flock, from the herd of the people of Israel. And we're already seeing how Yeshua says he is the son of man that come to save the world. All right, verse three. If his offering is a burnt sacrifice of the herd, let him be a male without blemish. Okay, so Yeshua was a male. He was a man. He was without sin, okay? So he was without spot or blemish. And there's the scripture on the screen, 1 Peter 1, 18 to 19. For you know that you were not redeemed with perishable things such as silver and gold, but with the precious blood of Yeshua Messiah, a lamb without spot or blemish. So we get the confirmation there in the Brit Hadashah that yet yeah, Yeshua was a man, he was a male, and he was without blemish. He was of the herd of the flock of Israel. And he came and he did not sin. He was without spot or blemish. So already we're beginning to see this is Jesus. This is Yeshua. He had no fault found within him. All right. He was without blemish. He was perfect. He shall offer it of his own free will at the door of the tabernacle. Luke twenty-two forty-two. This is on the night that Yeshua was betrayed in the garden of Gethsemane. He said, Father, if you will it, take this cup from me. Yet not my will be done but your will be done. 
okay so yeshua went to the cross willingly all right he was led like a lamb to the slaughter willingly isaiah 50 verse 6 prophetic about the suffering servant a prophecy about what jesus will do i offered my back to those that beat me i gave my cheeks to them who pulled out my beard i did not hide my face from mocking or spitting all right so he allowed these things to happen to him he did it with his own free will of his own accord because it was the will of the father Leviticus 1.3, he shall offer it of his own free will. We have to choose Mashiach. We've all been given free will and we can choose him in this life and we can choose and accept him now, here and now, today. And we have to use our own free will to choose the Aleph and the Tav as the offering unto the Lord that is going to atone for our sin. Galatians 2.20 says this, Christ gave himself willingly on our behalf. Isn't that incredible? So already we're only into verse 3. And we're seeing all the prophetic picture of Yeshua. Leviticus chapter 1 verse 4. Then he shall put his hand on the head of the burnt offering. And it will be accepted on his behalf to make atonement for him. And I want to run with this idea. Okay. Of, of placing the hands on the offering. This exchange. All right. This transfer. Well on the night Yeshua was betrayed. Matthew 26 verse 50 says. The soldiers came and they seized him. And they laid hands upon him. And Judas betrays him with that kiss. And it's in that moment that he is seized. That he moves into that passion. All right, That great triumph of Calvary. And the men laid hands upon him. All right, They chose the lamb that day. When, when he came in the city. And they all sung Hoshiana. They put their hands on their atonement sacrifices. They all wanted to reach out and grab him. It's so prophetic. 1 John 2.2 2, And he himself is the atoning sacrifice for our sins. And not only for our sins. But the sins of the whole world. Well, We've just read in Leviticus chapter 1 verse 4. They shall lay their hands, it shall be accepted, and it shall make atonement for him. Messiah is the atonement sacrifice, brothers and sisters, that redeems us from our sin. It's right there, it's all there. Romans 14 verse 18. For he who serves Christ in these things is acceptable to God and is approved by many. Okay, acceptable to God. The sacrifice shall be accepted. Okay, you have been accepted. Have you laid your hands upon the Aleph and the Tav? Is he your offering, the perfect one? Has he been your atonement sacrifice? Leviticus 1.4 tells us that the people shall do this and it shall make atonement for them. All right, it's the same sketch. We shall do it, the people shall do it, okay? And he becomes sin. He became that for us okay and he became the justice and the judgment for it on our behalf the transfer was made and in this way we truly love him leviticus 1 verse 5 he shall kill the bull before the lord and the priests shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood all around the altar that is by the door of the tabernacle of meeting all right let's break this one down again Isaiah 53 verse 12 says that Yeshua poured himself out unto death. He poured himself out and bore the sins of many. Okay. Yeshua was killed before the Lord. He was facing the holy place. If you go to Israel and you go uh, to Calvary, to, to Galgoth, the place of the skull, where you can go there now. It's opposite where the temple would have been. Yeshua would have been facing the Lord. He would have been directly before the Lord when he was killed in Calvary. Isn't that incredible? He would have been facing Jerusalem, the holy city. He would have been facing the temple. It's quite magnificent that the bull was killed before the Lord. And its blood, look, is sprinkled, okay? Isaiah 52 verse 15, it's on the screen. He shall sprinkle many nations, who? The suffering servant, Mashiach. It's all there. Everything is there. There it is. We're putting the jigsaw together. Hebrews 10, 22. Let us draw near with a true heart in full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience and our bodies washed with pure water. We've just read in Leviticus chapter 1, verse 5. He shall bring the blood and sprinkle the blood. It's the same word. He sprinkles many nations, okay? We've had our hearts sprinkled by his sacrifice, washed from an evil conscience. Isn't that incredible? Yeah, it's by the door as well, so 
when we're sprinkled and by the door we have the blood in mm. us. Hallelujah. Blood Hallelujah. Great testimony, sister. Powerful. By the door. Yeah. Amen. He is that door, isn't he? He said, I am the door. Mm. Leviticus 1 6. And he shall skin the burnt offering and cut it into pieces. Where do we see this? Isaiah 52 verse 14. His appearance was so disfigured beyond that of any human being and his form marred beyond any human likeness. What our Messiah went through that day, and we've studied it in the past, you know, how he was scourged, how he was had his flesh taken off him to the bone. The, the, pro, the prophecy says he's going to be unrecognisable. All right, he was so mutilated that he, you couldn't even know it was him. All right, his skin was pierced. He was pierced for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace is upon him and by his stripes we are healed. All right, so just as the animal had to be skinned, Yeshua was taken, his flesh was marred to pieces. He had his garments split, ripped off. He was stripped of his own outer garment, which is symbolic of the flesh also. He was stripped of his outer garment and had his garment cut up into pieces and had his garments divided for lots. It's all there. We're only on verse six. Are you with me? <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stay focused. Leviticus uh, chapter one, verse seven. The sons of Aaron, the priests, all right, this is, this is now how the priests officiate in the sacrifice. They had to partake in it. They had to put their hand in it. They had to be involved. They shall put fire on the altar and lay the wood in order on the fire for the offering. All right, now this word for wood, it's the same word, exulan, for wooden timber, wooden crossbeam, stake or tree. It's the same word. John 19, verse 17, carrying his own cross, exulam, he went to the place of the skull, which in Aramaic is called Galgoth. All right, he went to that place uh, with the wood, all right, with, with the cross. He's an officiator and he's an offering. Matthew 27, verse 41, and in the same way, the chief priests, all right, what did they do? They came out before him and mocked Jesus while he was on the cross. While he was on the stake, while he was on the altar, the priests come out and they're interacting with him while he's on the cross, while he's on the altar as a burnt sacrifice, as a whole consumed offering. And the priests are there, all right? And what did he do? They force him to carry the cross. He's got to carry the wood. We see the picture, it's right there. He hung upon the cross as an entire offering for six hours. All right, this is what scholars say. He was on the cross for six hours. When you burn the carcass of an animal, you know, we're going into them hours. He was a whole burnt offering. It took time. This thing took time. All right, he, he suffered for a very long time. And you, don't, you, you can't even comprehend how excruciating that would be. Yeah. That, that prolonged period of pain is like being burnt, being scalded. He was an entire burnt ascendant offering. And the priests were there at the time of the crucifixion. Leviticus 1 verse 8 then the priest shall lay the parts the head and the fat in order on the wood and put fire upon it all right well there's a process then of how the offering had to be dealt with there was a process of how Yeshua was pierced first he had the crown of thorns placed upon his head he was whipped then he was pierced in the side there's still a protocol and it says here and they shall wash its entrails and its legs with water all right so in 1 John 5 6 it says this is he who came by water and blood, Jesus Christ, not only by water, but by water and blood. And what happened? He was pierced in his side. And what, what came out? Blood and water. It came out from his stomach, from his abdomen, his entrails. And where would it have gone? It would have gone down the side of his legs, washed with blood and water. It's right there. Hebrews 9, 26. Christ has appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. We're getting into it now. We're getting into seeing how this is, okay? Leviticus 1 verse 9. It shall be an offering made by fire, a sweet aroma to the Lord. Ephesians 5 verse 2, Paul. And walk in love as Christ has loved us and given himself for us. An offering and a sacrifice, a sweet smelling aroma to God. All right, he is that ascending offering. He fulfills all the sacrifices. He's the source and summit of all the pictures that we're reading about now. It's him, it's him, it's him, it's him. And it's his miracle. And it's the cross that has saved you from your sin. So you've got to fall in love with this. You've got to be pierced by it. It's graphic. Well, the cross of Calvary was more graphic. This was our Messiah. The, 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 what we're seeing in Leviticus, it, it's a picture 
all right? It's a cartoon of what was going to happen, of the true substance of the suffering king who was without sin and died and suffered on our behalf in that way. Wow, what a thing it is. And he is that sweet smell and aroma. It's the same word, Lev 1.9, as Ephesians 5.2. Paul knew this. He knew it. He'd studied the Torah. He was a master in it. And this is why he calls the Mashiach the sweet smell and aroma. Leviticus 1 verse 15. Its blood shall be drained out where? At the side of the altar. John 19 verse 34. One of the soldiers pierced where? His side and immediately blood came out running down his side on the cross on the altar it's there it's all there we're only on verse 15 and, and it's all there and look i could go on and on and on line by line and precept by precept but really we just haven't got the time but i wanted to show you all the majesty of leviticus it's right there but when you read that the flesh is like oh whoa, oh, oh. but when you dissect it and you see it with spiritual eyes and you negotiate it with the cross of Calvary. Wow, Jesus is so awesome. Yeshua is the Mashiach. He did this. Wow, the book of Leviticus is potent. And the book of Leviticus was telling me this thousands of years before. And they were, they were all playing out the cross of Calvary in the wilderness. All the descendants were, were, were dress rehearsing the, the cross of Calvary. Wow, thousands of years before. This book is awesome. This is the living word of God. Wow, it's so powerful. And I wanted to show you that majesty of the book of Leviticus. And I could go on and on and on. We just go on and on and on and on and on. We just go and go and go That's and go and go. Every year, bro. Hallelujah. <laughs> and, and I'd love to. And maybe we're going to have to. Maybe we're going to have to. One day we'll go through it all. From the turtle doves and the spirit that descends like a dove. How it's pulled in half and Abraham did not pull the birds in half. We can go on and on and on. It's all there. It's all there. And I invite you all to do as I've just done as we go through the book of Leviticus. You get your pen and you go offering, sacrifice, lamb, without blemish, male, one year old. And before you know it, you've just proved he is the volume of the scroll. You've just proved it. When Yeshua was taking the disciples and the apostles through it, said, "That's me, that's me." Exactly, Martin. Yeah. All the time. Hallelujah, and it just confirms your faith because you know you can read that and be a little bit flabbergasted by it, and it's only when you see the cross that you go, "It is Him." Go ahead, bro. It's a wonderful um, approach, bro, just to see things through the lens of Yeshua and the cross, etc. Et <laughs> I also uh, recommend. People to, to, to look at the Hebrew as well. You don't have to. Oh, that's just another story in itself. You don't, you don't have itself, to know it? Hebrew to be able to check things online. Mm. It's all translated for you. It's transliterated. It's translated. It's there, right in front of you, in the palm of your hand. Anyone can do it. And, but you know, you, you made reference to where this verse two. See, there's, there's at least four words for man in Hebrew. You have um, Bahor, Gever, Ish. But for some, for this particular this episode here. It's Adam, right. and it's, most times it's Ish, Bachir or Gavir, it's like a younger man, but Adam is very rarely used, and it's specifically used here now. Well, it's obviously saying because it's, a, it's the second Adam, isn't yeah, it? It's, it's, it's the new Adam. Praise it's, it's, it's all pointing to Yeshua. It's safe on that face, you say, well, why doesn't it say Ish? Or any other way for man? But it's got to mention Adam to say, well, this is who it is. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You'd only, you'd only see that in the Hebrew because in most translations it doesn't even say man, it just says anyone. Mm. It just says anyone. And you go right past that thinking this is a this is a bit gory, this. But straight there at the very beginning it says Adam in the Hebrew. It, yeah, it's 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 there for a reason. Yeah. You know, you could have used any one of four words for, for man, but it's not even translated man, it just says anyone in most versions. Yeah. But it's Adam. It's mm. Adam. That's it, bro. And look, you can go away and do it. I see loads of people doing crosswords on the bus and that. Well, you can like go and do a Levitical crossword, you know. I'm not joking. We haven't even touched the grammatria, yet, the numerology, the pictograph, the Hebrew language, the chiasms. We've only done, you know, 10 verses, 15 verses there. And we spent half an hour just going through them. 
and you can just keep going and going and going and going and going and every time you lock in that crossword you go yes and it really is truly like empowering you know it's a, the glory of God to conceal the matter and the glory of kings to seek it out so you know I compel all of you to go and seek these things out because once you bingo it it's like the winning digits you're like yes you were wow hallelujah I found you again woo can't wait I just found you shooting again where 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 number 15 oh yeah I'm on it bro oh well it doesn't matter let's go on it again <laughs> you know you, you, you can buzz off it time and time and time again so yeah with that only with the lens of the cross do all things in Leviticus come to life if you believe Moses you believe me for he wrote about me and truly he did he truly did and this is the beauty of what we're doing as we study the Torah Tanakh these neglected books of the Bible that are just for the so-called Jews and I'm going wow Jesus was king of the Jews and he's on every single letter jot and tittle in the book of Leviticus and we've just begun to prove it we've just begun to prove it as I've said before only with the lens of Yeshua does the cross marry the book of Leviticus and both of them form a partnership, a covenant. Yeshua is the source and summit of all these sacrifices. He's found in every detail.